Hey guys, Scanner Danner here. Today we're working on a 2004 uh, something Chevy. What is this, Timmy? Impala. Impala. Thank you. Uh, with an air conditioning problem, uh, from what I was told, they put a couple cans of refrigerant in it. They being the customer a few weeks ago, and now it's not working. So let's see what kind of pressures we have. We'll do our, our normal checks, um, depending on what we see, whether it be a leak check with a leak detector or using soap and water. It's going to depend on what we have rest pressure wise. So let's get our gauges connected, see what kind of rest pressure we have. Low side is connected. There's nothing in this system. It's empty. Let's get our high side gauge hooked up too. So I can take my makeshift glasses off now. And my high side service port is down here. Make sure my valves are all tight. And then up here, again, we're empty. Static pressure, there is no low and high side. I'm gonna put air in this system. Timmy, can I get a rubber tipped air nozzle? One rubber tipped air nozzle coming up. All right. So the leak detector is not gonna be very helpful. No refrigerant, we're gonna use soap and water. This is not the ideal method. I used to have some fittings. I'm gonna have to make some additional ones. Again, no problem with 150 pounds of shop air. That's what we're gonna use. 150 being what Pete's compressor set at. It's about 100, 120, which is good. All right, we just uh, waited for that compressor to shut off so you guys could hear me well. Um, this dropped from 120 down to 105 in a matter of three or four minutes, so we have a pretty significant leak in this system. Before we start spraying, I wanna make sure again that my compressor works, that all of my electronic controls work. So I'm gonna have, uh, actually, Timmy, can I borrow you again? Yeah. Just jump in this and turn the air on and we'll run it for about five seconds. One of the things I didn't talk about in my last one is uh, refrigerant picks up the oil and carries it through the system. So that's what lubricates the compressor. And in this step, we're running this compressor dry. No oil, which is why we don't want to do this for very long. Caleb, onto the gauges. Go ahead, Tim, and start that. Turn the air on. Okay, good. So I saw about 25 and 200 roughly. I like that. That means our compressor is functional. We're good, Timmy. Thank you. You can shut the key off. Compressor is functional. Uh, all the wiring, all the inputs going to the engine computer, the computer, the outputs, the relay, all of it's good. That's what that test does. You don't want to run it longer than five seconds simply because that compressor is running without lubricant. Again, the refrigerant picks up the oil, carries it through the system, and without refrigerant in here, we're just using compressed air, that compressor's running dry. But it's a test you want to do because again, you don't want to sell a major overhaul on some kind of AC leak only to find out later that you need an AC compressor or you have some kind of electronic control issue. We know we're good there. Let's find our leak, fix this system. And pressure has not totally equalized yet. So these numbers are a little bit off from where they were before, but we still have enough in here where we can start spraying. Um, as far as uh, what I'm using, I'm just using a, a cheap car wash. And um, generally what you wanna use is a 50-50 mix. If you go a little bit too much water, not enough soap, it won't bubble as well for you. So you really wanna be generous with the amount of soap you're using. Okay, so just again, knowing systems, knowing designs, we wanna eyeball our components. And um, you know, every car is different. There's no, really no one place you, can, you need to start, but there's a fitting right there. That's your suction discharge hoses. Uh, if you follow the fatter line, that's your suction line. And the skinnier line underneath that is your discharge line. And so those are rubber connections. I wanna spray those. Spraying both suction and discharge hoses. Uh, I'm actually going to spray the entire face and housing of the compressor. Then 
we will follow those lines that way there's some fittings over there we'll get to the condenser here in a minute those lines come up this way and I want to remind you guys that with the gauges connected that's an area that uh, you can have a leak is the service ports but our gauges were dropping even with these connected so we do have a leak elsewhere that is not the service ports so right back here I'm spraying at the um, block that goes to the evap and now we're on to the condenser which would be helpful to get this out of my way all right down here front face is oh look at that right there without even spraying it we have evidence uh, of a oil leak you can see the discoloration in the fins uh, on the right hand side of this condenser so that's a real good suggestion that our leak is right there so before we spray it we do those kind of visuals over here too I don't see anything there but certainly right there looks like an area where we have a leak so we're gonna spray that really good kind of watch that for a minute maybe on the outside fins can't see that can't get to the other part of the condenser that I want to get to to see it remember the uh, Looney Tunes one uh, cartoon with the abominable snowman and he keeps wiping himself he's like sheesh it's hot Remember that one? And he melts at the end. Remember, Timmy? No, the abominable snowman. It was like Daffy Duck. Oh. And now I'll never, gosh, it's hot, never see my bunny rabbit again. <laughs> I'll hug him and I'll stroke him and I'll call him George. Remember that one? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how I feel like. She's it's hot. She's it's hot. I'm melting. Um, that evidence of oil here is suggesting to me the condenser. The problem is I can't get to the part on the side where I believe the leak is. And what I need to do to do that is move this entire support out of the way which really sucks and we got looks like refrigerant oil all over that area hey pete yeah. how much of a pain is it to move this rad forward so i can get to this corner of the condenser on this car Sometimes, Paul, while, while diagnosing the problem, you got to take things apart. No, actually, the way it goes is is I'm going to go back and work on that Ford truck, and I'm going to make you guys take you this take apart. Off, and probably there, but, but like right the there. corner, the corner of this Pete here, I'll show you while you're here. Look at the corner of this 
you can kind of see the discoloration. I mean, you really can't because I sprayed it, but that bottom right corner, right. and I need to get to the outside where the tubes connect, and I can't, I'm, I'm almost positive that is where our leak is. You're not gonna have that unless the tranny cooler lines are there. No, tranny cooler lines are on, are on this side. The only thing that would cause that is a refrigerant oil leak, or refrigerant leak. Right. I need this pulled forward to be 100%. I mean, you're gonna be in there anyway changing this condenser. Take these mounts maybe off. Mm -hmm. Two bolts here. Tim. Take this out of the way. Tim, you're up, man. I'm walking away for a minute. I'm going to do my other car. I'm giving you a job to do. Cool? That's cool. <laughs> Has to be cool. He doesn't have a choice. Ah, I got choices. Well, we could just throw a condenser in it and cross our fingers. No, we ain't doing that. All right, well, then we need to confirm it. Okay. All right, pausing it here. Let me find it. All right, so thank you, Tim, for pulling this apart. Um, in here, we can see our leak now. It is definitely in the corner of the condenser. All right, so it, at least we did... The leak is right here, guys. I'm going to see if I can show it to you. Um, at least Tim didn't ha have to pull this apart for nothing. This is absolutely where the leak is. You can see some bubbles right from my angle. I don't know if you'll see it where you are, Caleb. I can't really see it. It's about see it? You'll start seeing them. See it? So uh, surprisingly, the evidence was there for the oil. These R134A systems, um, what I've found in the past is the water just washes the oil off and, and it's very difficult to find leaks based on the oil. There's a nice big old fat bubble right there. Um, but yeah, leaking condenser. And of course, with this system being open to the atmosphere, the accumulator dryer should be replaced. This is a uh, fixed orifice tube system and it has a accumulator dryer, not a receiver dryer. So the repair to write this up is going to be condenser and accumulator and evac and recharge and they should be should be okay. Um, did not find any leaks anywhere else. The only other thing that you would have an issue with with this kind of testing would be the evap itself and then the compressor shaft seal these are things that you can't um, check with this leak leak test so you know there is the possibility of having uh, another leak at the evap core another leak at the compressor shaft seal um, you know those are things that I don't think you need to panic the customer with, but let them know about it, that those are two areas that you did not really leak check because there's no refrigerant in the system. And I'm not putting refrigerant in here with a leak right here. You know what, bring your customer out, show them where the leak is, do the repair, you'll be fine. I don't think you need to um, be overly concerned about the EVAP and compressor shaft seal. Again, two places you can't find with the soap and water uh, test. It's up to you guys, you want to put refrigerant in it and do the final checks on those two locations with a leak, de uh, leak detector, feel free to do that. But pretty simple diagnosis here, condenser leak. And um, again, don't forget to do that compressor test with your air pressure to make sure everything electrically is good. Sorry, I may have misquoted this type of system that's on this. Uh, come over here, Caleb, and, and I'll show you why. This fat line right here, that goes to my um, compressor, that's my suction line. And um, if this was a orifice tube system with a accumulator dryer, there would be a dryer in this line, and there's not. This line goes straight up this way, over and into the block at the EVAP, and that actually looks like that's an expansion valve right there at the EVAP core, so that means that this uses a receiver dryer, which is on the high side of a system, which is this guy right here. 
That's this guy right here. So this is not a orifice tube system. This is a thermal expansion valve system. And so it needs the receiver dryer, not accumulator dryer. And then another question I had off camera from Tim was, should we do the, you know, the orifice tube or the expansion device? And the answer is no. In the case of a leak, that's not necessary. The only time you'd want to do uh, the expansion device, whether it be an orifice tube or TXV, would be when you have a compressor failure. And uh, so no, it's not necessary. So receiver dryer and condenser. Cool. Got it. So thanks for joining me, guys. Um, I appreciate you guys being here. Don't forget to check out my website at scannerdanner.com and then Scanner Danner Premium, which I'll take you right into my classroom at Rosedale Technical College, and I can train you to be a diagnostic technician, both here on my free channel and Scanner Danner Premium. So again, thanks for joining me. Special thanks to cameraman Caleb. We'll see you guys next time.